Good morning. I'm Valerie Milano with the Hollywood Times, and we have Josh here, and I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself. Thank you, Josh. Hey, I'm uh, Joshua Warren. I'm the director for my sh uh, the sh current short film, My Dreams Have Been Dark of Late. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. And um, you are, we're, we're talking, and where are you calling from? I'm actually in the middle of Derbyshire in the UK. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, in the East Midlands, near Nottingham. All right. Beautiful. And here we are. I am right in the middle of Hollywood, California. So, uh, nice. yeah, we've been trying to get our, our, our times together, and I'm glad we finally did. So thanks so much. Um, and we're going to talk about his film. My dreams are have been uh, dark of late, and um, I appreciate you taking the time for us. It's a four-minute uh, short film. And um, it's about a knight in shining armor. And I'm going to turn my sound off on my other computer here. Um, and um, I want to talk about how the knight escapes uh, battle only to find himself uh, suffering from crushing blows, you know, that uh, to be his armor by an unseen foe. Um, is he actually battling his own armor or is this a delayed dream? Um, is he suffered the blows an actual battle uh, and his escape is a dream? Can you explain that to uh, us? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think well, the whole film is a dream, really, I think. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I think um, it's kind of like one of the reasons we wanted to do it. I think it's kind of it's a fever dream, really, you know, an anxiety dream. And um, I think it's the, the you know that that armor is kind of more of a metaphor, uh, you know, for the sort of the pressures of the of society and 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 sort of all that kind of things and um, being a man and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I think it's it's much more uh, metaphorical uh, than like you know the physical. <laughs> Act is just, we just, you know, we we sh wanted to show that visually as well. So, yeah, we're able to, fortunately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is the, is the crushing death from a from the armor, you know, for, for life's propensity to crush our dreams, even when we feel invincible in our own armor? Is that kind of what how you wrote it? I think that's quite a good interpretation. I, I would say yes. Possibly, um, for me, it's um, yeah, it's about it's kind of like the crushing, like weight of of like anxiety and things like that. I think, and and uh, you know, depression and things. Um, you know, that kind of same. You know, you can't really escape. You put, kind of put these walls up to try and help that you think might help, but actually are probably hindering you in, in reality. And and I think yeah. also it's kind of a. It's a bit of a juxtapose, isn't it? You know, when you think about it, you know, it's the, the one thing that's meant to protect you. <laughs> yeah. Actually work, works against you, right? So, yeah. It, it, the, the knight's armor is pristine and um, unblocked and, un, and, and unbloodied by, uh, by battle. Uh, yet he was running from something, another metaphor for one's fear of facing life's battles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he's... You know, and, and this was kind of a thread that we spoke about quite a lot was that he's a coward, you know, he's a cowardly knight and and he's running away from a battle. It's, you, you know, you wouldn't expect that. Well, you, sh you shouldn't expect that from someone in that kind of position, right? You know, you'd expect them to go to lead, to take the the rest of the soldiers or whoever into battle. You know, the, the knights in shining armor are the ones that are supposed to turn up and help, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but okay. to actually be you know, show that cowardly thread, I think, was kind of quite an important one for us, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Well, you must have worked really hard to keep that that armor so shiny. My goodness. Yeah, much to our DOP's uh, kind of, yeah, dis dismay, you know, he's shooting, making sure he's not visible in it and stuff, you know, the camera crew aren't in, can't be seen in it and all that kind of stuff. I, so, I know, bet that uh, too, exactly. He's like, can we not just buff it a little bit more, you know, like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of the hardest parts of the filmmaking process, exactly. the time-consuming. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Well, it seems that shooting without dialogue leaves is it up to the audience to decide what is actually happening, real or dreams? That was the idea, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I, I sort of come from the school of less is more. I think and less is more. Yeah, yeah and uh, more. and yeah, I think that's the same with dialogue. You know, we're, we're in a visual medium. Like, uh, let's let's show it that way, and like try and use visual language rather than uh, you know, uh, sp- sp- you know, spoken word. Not to say that, that you know there's some amazing dialogue. Of course there is. Like you know, I'd love to get my teeth into you know a real dialogue heavy thing. But um, I think for this, it, it certainly sp- speaks for itself in a way. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, yeah, definitely. Less is more was the the approach, and it ended up with none. <laughs> yeah, with none. Um. So so where are you where where else are you going to go take the film? Are are you doing film festivals? What's happening? Yeah, we, just, we actually just did Fright Fest yesterday. Um, you did what? Uh, we went to Fright Fest yesterday. Oh, Fright Fest. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, we went there yesterday and had a big uh, had the big screen in Leicester Square, which is fantastic. It's great to see it on such a big, uh, big screen. And uh, yeah, that was cool. We we're in Sidges in I think in October, and uh, also a bit later on. Next month, we're at Dead Northern up in York as well. Yeah. So all international over there, huh? Have you done anything yeah. over here? Uh, not yet, no. Um, uh, we're hoping that Telluride might say yes, but we well, I don't know. You know, I'd love to get into there. And, um, yeah, there's some amazing, there's some, you know, great festivals over, over the pond, you know, so... Uh, Fingers crossed. Over the pond. I love that. Thank you. An old adage, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Show my age, right? right. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, yeah. yay. Are, are you are you planning your next film yet? Yeah, well, actually, we've got a couple in the in the pipeline um, that we'd like to do. It's, as always, it's looking for the money. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we've, you know, there's, I think, like three or four. That we'd we'd like to try and get funded shorts that is um uh and i think i'd still like to do a couple more shorts to be honest before i start delving into the feature world but the we also have a couple of features bubbling away in the in the very backs of our minds you know um uh so yeah i think uh very busy but um always chasing the uh chasing that ever elusive um yeah budget <laughs> Well, how can uh, how can our audience, our readers, find you, um, and and your film? Uh, well, obviously in the festivals, hopefully um, for the certainly for the next couple of months, and then uh, we'll hopefully put it online somewhere. Uh, what we're going to try and find a home for it, um, uh, but otherwise, you can find us on Instagram uh, and our website, uh, antiroom.co. All right, wonderful, Josh. Well, we're the Hollywood Times dot today, and our um, YouTube channel is the Hollywood Times official. So, I'll be uh, sending you a, a, a link to our review with a clip from our show here today. And again, I appreciate the time you took, and hopefully, our paths will cross, uh, not virtually, but in person one day. Yes, festival. fingers crossed. Yeah, thank you. Thank Great. you so much for having me as well. Really thank you it. so much. I appreciate the time and 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 your creativity and sharing it with us. Okay. <laughs>